Hello everybody and welcome to the video. Today we're going to be talking about how to use custom security attributes with conditional access policies in Azure Active Directory. Um, this is a new feature, it's still currently in preview, but it's pretty powerful and I like it a lot so we're going to do some tinkering with it. If we go over here to our entry portal and we go to Azure Active Directory underneath of Protect and Secure, we have an option down here for custom attributes. So these are going to apply to all identities, whether they're applications, users, um, managed identities, of you know anything like that. So I've got a few different sets in here. So for users, obviously, human resource data is really important. This set is it defines personally identifiable information related to HR activities. So inside of this set, I've got a few attributes: you know, cost center, hire date, HR system username. If you're using ServiceNow or Workday, you should be familiar with that. And then I've got cybersecurity user, cybersecurity application, and then cybersecurity data. So cybersecurity data is the core attributes related to security operations that apply to both users and applications, and then user-specific attributes and application-specific attributes. So under the core data attributes, I've got account type. This is set to predefined values. So we've got managed identity, enterprise application, service account, or user. Organization, I've got some you know, dummy values here, HQ org, feature org. Uh, is privileged admin? Does a service principal user account, does it have excessive rights? And then what's the priority of it? So you want to be able to classify priorities on your users and applications. Uh, over here in user specific data, I've got category for the users, so if we go into this attribute, it's predefined. On the custom security attribute, you know, you've got your name, description, you can do Boolean, integer, strings for data types, you can make it multi-valued, or you can do predefined values. Um, it's important to note that you can't change these after you set them, so please do some planning before you set these up. Uh, if you want it to be predefined values, you need to make sure you select yes. You know, after the fact, I can go in here and modify these values, but I can't actually you know, enable and hit yes if it was set to no originally. So that's important to note. So under category, we've got you know, business staff, IT staff, cyber staff, management, senior leadership, and executive leadership. Then we've got some Boolean values, is director, is manager, is a VIP, personal cell phone, and personal email. I like to use those attributes for self-service password reset. And then over here in application, we're going to create a few extra ones, but we've got, uh, we've got some baselines here. So does it have an API that's open? Yes, no. Does it contain sensitive info? Does it have certificates? Does it have secrets? Is it developed in-house? Does it have single sign-on en enabled? Um, so the key point of this video and another thing that we can do is we can create custom attributes that are specifically related to conditional access. So if I go over here, I'm going to go to our application attributes and I'm going to add an attribute. So another new feature that Azure AD has is a, a setting called conditional authentication strings. Um, and this can, you can do regular MFA with this. You can do passwordless MFA or you can do phishing resistant MFA out of the box. Um, and this is going to be an option that gives you the ability to ramp up security over time. So like phishing resistant MFA and passwordless MFA don't actually require a password. Um, so if you wanted to take an application and you wanted to raise it from regular MFA to phishing resistant MFA, we could do that simply by changing the attribute on this one right here in the future after we get the conditional access policy set up. This is string. This is going to be predefined values because we want to match these up. We're going to be using automation with this as well. And then the last one that I'm going to do is sign in frequency.
All right, so we've got sign-in frequency, preset values. We're going to do one day, three day, seven days, 14 days, 30 days, 60 days. 90 days is the Azure default, so we don't really need to include that. Uh, we only need to include where we're going to make it shorter than the, the tenant default. All right, so now I've got these security attributes defined. The next thing is going to be how do we use these in conditional access policies. So over here under protect and secure, we're going to go to conditional access. And we're going to create a new policy. Um, and we'll call this require seven day sign in frequency. And we could target all users. Like always, we want to exclude our break glass accounts. And then under here, under the cloud apps, what we're going to do is we're going to go to select apps and we're going to use the edit filter. And we're going to configure, yes. We're going to choose the attribute. And we can see all of our custom security attributes here, right? So we want to go to sign in frequency for cybersecurity application. And I'm going to say equals seven days. So anytime an application has the attribute set to require seven days for the sign-in frequency, we're, we're going to catch this policy. So conditions, we're going to leave that alone. Conditional access, in my opinion, is better when it's modularized. So we're just going to go over here to session control. And the only control in here is going to be the matching seven day sign in frequency. And then we're going to hit create. Now, if we go over to an application, we're going to go to enterprise applications and I'm actually going to create one for a video, another video that I'm working on for 48 VPNs. FortiGate VPN, we're going to use the FortiGate SSL VPN application, and we'll just, yeah, we'll just call it the default name, FortiGate SSL VPN, we're only going to have one of them. All right, so now we've got this application created, and now we can go down here to custom security attributes, and we can define what we want for this. So VPNs are very popular one in some of the highest security levels are going to apply to a VPN, which is why I'm using that as an example. So we're going to go ahead and add an assignment. And we're going to say, we're going to set some of its priorities. So this is going to be a critical application. Enterprise application. Is it privileged? No, this is not going to be privileged. Organization, yeah, we'll just say HQ organization. And save those. And we'll get our cybersecurity application attributes over here. API open, false. This is a little bit tedious when you're doing it manually. Obviously, we're going to want to set this programmatically on the back end going forward. It is going to be SSO enabled, so it is going to have certificates. And it's not going to have secrets. It is not an in-house application. It will not contain sensitive information. Single sign-on will be true. 
And you can use SAML or OAuth for single sign-on. Device platforms allowed. This is a good one. The only ones that I really want to be able to connect right now are going to be Windows and Mac OS. Always require MFA is going to be set to true. And that one might trip you up because it's a VPN, uh, but if you're in an organization that does VPNs internally as well, then you're gonna you're gonna want to make sure that MFA always required is on. Oops, wrong data set. And then here we go. So we're gonna get, we're gonna set this to MFA to start off with. For right now, we are not gonna require a compliant device. We're not going to require Azure AD join yet, but we're going to crank those up over time. And let's set the sign in frequency to seven days from now. Seven days. So let's go ahead and save these attributes. Go over here to our conditional access policy to kind of see how that's illustrated. We can go to our what if tool up here. So any cloud app, we're going to select our VPN application. Coming from United States. And we can do a what if here. So we can see here block leg legacy authentication is you know, going to apply to this. Require the seven day sign in frequency. This particular conditional access is only set via the custom security attributes at this point. So we have require MFA off network. Uh, that's one's in the report only. Oh yeah, that's because this tenant doesn't have any trusted networks that I can, yeah, that would mess with everybody. Um, so I'm gonna go through and set some of the other conditional access policies that relate to these custom security attributes and then we'll come back and we'll tinker with this what if a little bit more. All right, so now we've gone ahead and restructured our conditional access policies. So what you'll see down here is that we have our block ones. So we're gonna block unsanctioned guest access, and that's globally. We're gonna block unsanctioned countries, and we're gonna block legacy authentication. We also have a global rule for all apps that's gonna require MFA for administrators. But you know, if you're not a global admin, if you're using the proper channels, pretty much everything else is gonna get filtered through these app policies. And these app policies are all the same. Um, as far as constraints go, they have the, they're targeting all users, excluding a break glass admin, and they have uh, the applications filtered to the security attribute, and they're applying the corresponding control. So for this one, for instance, require MFA phishing resistant. We can see all users excluding the break glass user. The apps are configured off of a filter where that security attribute equals phishing resistant MFA. And the control is the corresponding control of authentication methods, phishing resistant MFA. So now, what does that mean, right? So maybe you start off with 
always, you know, you just want MFA, right? Insurance companies always want MFA on the VPN application. So, you know, that's where we're starting off with. We go over here to our what if. We're going to select our app. So let's do what if. So policies that will apply. The global rule, the block rule. Require MFA standard. Require seven day sign in frequency. And that corresponds to the attributes over here. There we go. So require authentication strengths is MFA. Here we can see the policies that do not apply, right? So phishing resistant MFA did not apply. But I'm going to go ahead and switch my oops, switch my attribute over here to phishing resistant MFA, and I'm going to increase the sign-in frequency to 14 days. I believe that's what I have in there is 14 days. Yep, I got a 14 day in there. All right, so I'm going to update those two attributes. I'm going to hit save. Come over here again, and I'm going to run this what if. Now we can see that phishing resistant MFA is being applied and a 14 day sign in frequency is being applied. So you can start an application off low and then as you want to kind of ramp up its security, maybe you don't have Defender for Endpoint deployed, maybe you don't have Intune deployed, you can't tell whether a device is compliant right now. We'll go ahead and leave that off the table. We'll get the VPN application set up three months from now or whenever we have Intune rolled out. Now we can enforce device compliance. All we need to do is go in there and flip the attribute on the application to require device compliance, and then conditional access is going to take over from there. So this is a pretty powerful new tool. I'm excited to see what Microsoft has in store for this. Like I said, it's in preview right now, um, but you know, like most things that Microsoft deploys in preview, it's going to expand pretty pretty quickly so i look forward to seeing what it does so you know if you enjoyed this video um go ahead and hit subscribe and i look forward to seeing you in the next video hopefully you learned a little bit about custom security attributes and how to use them in conditional access today